Good afternoon, everyone. It's more likely good evening, because it's after three. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm happy to be here to talk to you. I'm going to talk about the politeness of people with intellectual disability. But before that, I'm going to talk about, a little bit about my life. My mom, mother had me. I was born intellectually challenged. And we talk about fearlessness. Well, my mother, she didn't fear anything. She had seven children. And of course, when I came, she was told, you know, this one you're going to have to institutionalize. It probably won't live that long. And of course, my mom read the spill, and she said, don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I'll raise my children. Well, my mother had dreams and hopes just like every other mother. She wanted me to grow up like her other six siblings who were living, two deceased, and one adopted, which would have made 10 children. But she wanted me to grow up and go to school. And her dream was for me to graduate from high school. Like any other child, I had dreams. I wanted to be an athlete, I wanted to be a nurse, and I wanted to be a veterinarian. Well, two of my dreams I knew wasn't going to happen because of all the naysays that came around. You're not going to do this. You're not going to graduate from high school. You're in a segregated class. I was segregated outside on the playground. I heard a man talk about earlier about playgrounds for everyone, inclusionary playgrounds. Well, when it comes to a child who is intellectually challenged, there's not much of a playground for them but to be bullied and teased and be the teeterball of everybody's joke. Well, as time went by, my mom's dreams were fulfilled. I graduated from high school, but I was still living a violent, angry life. I can remember going to the dentist with my sisters and brothers. And she took all five of us girls, and the dentist would look at four of them and said, oh yes, when you got to me, oh, we can't treat her. You need to take her to the clinic. Of course, my mom, being the broad person she was, she didn't take no slack from nobody. <laughs> but of course, sometimes she fell. And there was a time when I was going to be institutionalized. The two schools that I was going to go to are now closed. And she was proadding that her child was going to be educated in the same school system that her other six children who are living. You got a special education class here, you're going to educate my child. My mom was fearless, and you had to be fearless of her. You couldn't be fearless for her, because she was big. And when she talked, she was like E.F. Hutton. She didn't take no back slack from nobody. <laughs> and when she said, be quiet, shut up, she meant it. She could pick you out of a crowd. Talk about being fearless. This woman was fearless. She was fearless in the community, and she was fearless for her seven young children, even though she was, had welfare, even though there wasn't much food. But she met what she met, and she met for her children to be their best. Of course, I'm living with anger, taking a lot of psychotrophy drugs. It was coming time for me to branch out. I was going to a workshop when a man approached me and says, you know, there's a program called Special Olympics. I didn't speak. And no, I didn't use sign language. And I remember him saying to me, we want you to come out for this program. And of course, me and myself, mean, angry, all I looked like was like this. I could care less because I know it was a bread and a joke. I got into Special Olympics, a free program. Of course, it offered sports and training competition. At the time they used this word, this word is not to be used now for the retarded. Now we use terms like people who have intellectual disabilities. When I first got into Special Olympics, it was one day. Now it's all year, 180 countries. It's providing more than sport. It's providing something that I was denied, healthcare. Just a month ago, I was up at the Clinton Global Initiative to speak about people being denied a health care who have intellectual disability. Of course, people come to the platform with about people, how they're treated. There's not enough food, clean water. You know the logistics of what people came. But for the first time, somebody with an intellectual disability was able to get up and speak to the world about people who have the needs and the disparity of health care for people with intellectual disability. Rise up, folks. It's happening here in the U.S. of A. 
that people are still being denied. And when I think about, about being fearless, today, when I get out there and fight, I'm fearless. I didn't think I was able to get back. I was told that what I wasn't going to be. There was supposed to be a gentleman here today, Mr. Tim Shriver, was supposed to speak on fearlessness, and he says, I'm not the person to speak. Loretta, you are. And I never thought I could be fearless. Yes, I do fear still today. I do fear the future, because I know right in this country, healthcare for the regular population, how we are challenging to get decent health care. So, yes, I am growing older, and I do have fears, just like everyone else, about how I'm going to be treated and how people with intellectual disabilities around this country and around the world is going to be treated. Because if we don't have good health care, we have nothing. You can have all you want in this world. You can have the best of food. But if you don't have good health and care for yourself, we don't have humanity. And now when I look at Special Olympics, I'll always think back. Why would somebody like Miss Eunice Kennedy Shriver, who came from a prominent family, think about somebody who was intellectually challenged? Yes, she had a sister that was intellectually challenged, but she went beyond that in 1968 when she knocked on the gates. And she says, you know what? I'm going to take my chance. In 1962, she had a camp in the yard. Society told her, no, 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 those people don't belong. People like me belonged in institutions. Warehouse, for a crime we didn't commit, basically prison. And here was a woman who stood out. And I always wanted to ask her. We were great, great friends. And I never got to ask her this question. Eunice, did you ever fear of what people would think? of you doing something for a population of people who are not supposed to be thought of? I wish I would have had the chance to ask that question to her, and I didn't. I had to rely on faith. I had to rely on being fearless, and for me to be fearless, for people with intellectual disability, I have to trust in my faith, trust in my faith in others, trust in my faith in good people in my life. And yes, when I think about Mrs. Shriver, she took a chance and she wasn't afraid. She wasn't afraid to be fearless no matter what stepped in front of her. And that's the way I feel today. I'm not afraid to be fearless, whether it's going up against the President of the United States or talking to Congress or talking to Senate. People ask me all the time, Loretta, aren't you afraid of that? I said, no. No, I guess this is the job God gave me to do. When I look back at my life, I was supposed to be feared. But today, I look at my life and I look at so many lives, so many people being involved with people with intellectual disability. And when I look at Special Olympics today, I think about unified sports where people with regular abilities come into the school or into the community and play with people with intellectual disability. I look at Project Unified where we come in and talk young people in schools where they are being bullied with intellectual disabilities and regular abilities talking about just their own issues. Last January, I heard a principal with tears talking to me. He said, Loretta, since we started Project Unified where our regular students come in and talk to the students with special needs, we had one girl that wouldn't come to school anymore. And because of that, today bullying has went down 60% in our school. 60%. Bullying's a big issue. So today when I look and see what Special Olympics is doing, whether it's health care, whether it's people to be in, in the community, whether it's for a child to play on the park, whether it's for somebody to get their own apartment, to advocate, to be fearless, I have to have something in my mind and beside me. I put my strength and I put my faith in God that I can be fearless on behalf of Eunice, on behalf of Special Olympics, on behalf of all people with intellectual disability. So when I look around that one day, I won't have to have a job to fight. I won't have to be fearless that one day I'll be able to walk down the street and look at this person and think of them as a person instead of a person with an intellectual disability. 
as a person to be a part of your community, of my community. Being fearless is hard. And I'll be the first one to tell you about it. Because I don't know what it is not to be fearful. I've always grown up to be fearful. Fearful of what life is going to give me. Fearful of what's going to happen in the future. But now today, I'm proud to say that I am fearless. Not for Loretta, but for the world of all people. So I would like to thank each and every one of you here. And that I hope you will go home. If you fear something today, keep your faith. Keep faith in yourself. Keep faith in what you believe. And you can be fearless. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. God bless.